Oh, hi. <laughs> okay, part two of the Power of Now story. Um, Power of Now story. <laughs> um, a book. All right, I wanted to read a bit on the front. Um, first of all, it's by um, Dan Millman, another really great guy I really like. Anyway, he, he says, um, In the Power of Now, author Sage Eckhart Tolle uses words to guide readers beyond words. Pointing to the portals of the eternal present, this practical mystic's modern gospel offers transcendent truths that set us free. I just love the way it's almost poetic, I thought it was brilliant. <coughs> I'll just do that bit again. Pointing to the portals of the eternal present, this practical mystic's modern gospel offers transcendent truths that set us free. <laughs> trying to, not to breathe in between. Right. And um, I'm not going to read too much boring stuff. Um, <clears throat> this bit I really like, it's just two lines long from Eckhart Tolle in the beginning of the book. You are here to enable the divine purpose of the universe to unfold. That is how important you are, exclamation mark. I like that. We're all important, every single one of us, you know, no matter what who we are and what we've done, we're all bloody important. We're allowing the universe to unfold. Right. And then um, there's a lot of boring stuff in the beginning, right, which I'm not going to read. Go past the acknowledgements. Now I'm going to read um, the introduction. It's not very long. And, that, and that's quite exciting, that part, like how the book came into existence, kind of thing, you know, his original struggle and um, struggles and um, how he had this massive epiphany one night. It's really brilliant. I love it. <coughs> Hopefully it's to help other people get grounded and get perspective on life and stuff, which is what I'm all about, babies. I mean, people, um, men, women, girls, boys. Right. The origin of this book. I have little use for the past and rarely think about, about it. God, itchy foot as soon as I start. <laughs> I have little use for the past and rarely think about it. However, I would briefly like to tell you how I came to be a spiritual teacher and how this book came into existence. Until my 30th year, I lived in a state of almost continuous anxiety interspersed with periods of suicidal depression. It feels now as if I'm talking about some past lifetime or somebody else's life. One night, not long after my 29th birthday, I woke in the early hours with a feeling of absolute dread. Working in the early hours with a feeling of absolute dread. <clears throat> I'd woken up with such a feeling many times before, but this time it was more intense than it had ever been. The silence of the night, the vague outlines of the furniture in the dark room, the distant noise of a passing train, everything felt so alien, so hostile and so utterly meaningless that it created in me a deep loathing of the world. The most loathsome thing of all, however, was my own existence. God, I can relate. <laughs> um, what was the point in continuing to live in this burden of misery? Why carry on with this continuous struggle? I could feel that a deep longing for I could feel that a deep longing for annihilation, for non-existence, was now becoming much stronger than the instinctive desire to continue to live. Talking about the suicide the other day, I might have cut that out of the first video, but part of um, uh, I don't know whether to talk about the suicide thing because everyone you meet, like, once you get scraped below the surface and you get to know really know people, they all seem to have a suicide, you know, thoughts of suicide at some stage in their lives. You know, obviously not very young people necessarily, but <clears throat> most people think about suicide at some stage so it's part of um i want to give people hope you know don't commit suicide whatever you do because i've read stuff about people going to the other side and they always regret it you know it's like an opportunity to be here but we don't realize we're so weighed down with all our problems and stuff we can't see part of why we're here so yeah so the suicide thing anyway <clears throat> um yeah, so his desire for annihilation was outweighing, becoming stronger than his instinctive desire to continue to live. I cannot live with myself any longer. This was the thought that kept repeating itself in my mind. Then suddenly I became aware of what a peculiar thought it was. Am I one or two? If I cannot live with myself, there must be two of me. The I and the self that I cannot live with. 
Maybe, I thought, only one of them is real. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I was so stunned by this strange realisation that my mind stopped. I was fully conscious, but there was no more thoughts. There were no more thoughts. Then I felt drawn into what seemed like a vortex of energy. It was a slow movement at first and then accelerated. I was gripped by an intense fear and my body started to shake. I heard the words, resist nothing, as if spoken inside my chest. I could feel myself being sucked into a void. It felt as if the void was inside myself rather than outside. Suddenly there was no more fear and I let myself fall into that void. I have no recollection of what happened after that. I'm reading absolutely terribly because I haven't prepared. Sorry about that. But it's like, I keep saying like, if I spent time preparing everything, I wouldn't do it because I'm not feeling great this morning. It's quite hard. So I decided to do it anyway. Sorry about that. I might redo it, I suppose, sometime. Anyway, I was awakened by the chirping of a bird outside the window. I'd never heard such a sound before. <laughs> I'd never heard such a sound before. My eyes were still closed and I saw the image of a precious diamond. Yes, if a diamond could make a sound, this is what it would, would be like. I opened my eyes. The first light of dawn was filtering through the curtains. Without any thought, I felt... I knew that there is infinitely more to light than we realise. Yeah, I love that. Light is just made up of so much stuff. It's incredible. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh, God. That's my place. <coughs> anyway. That soft luminosity filtering through the curtains was love itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Love. We're all one. Everything's made of God. Everything's... We're all God. We're all one we're all everything's connected and um light is, is going to be love as well everything's love you know but yeah light is so beautiful anyway um all right yeah the light that came through through the curtains was love itself tears came into my eyes it's making me tear up that's crazy isn't it hmm. i got up and walked around the room i recognized the room and yet I knew that I had never truly seen it before. I can totally relate to that. When I get into the present moment, when I'm focused, it's like I suddenly realize, oh, wow, everything looks different, you know? It's like I spend all my time out here thinking, 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 and ah. Oh. It's so nice when I actually get present. I love it. The quality of my life feels so different. It's like, oh, it's one of my big things, is just being inside myself and being present, obviously. That's why I keep on about it. Right, okay. not everyone has this problem, I realise, but there's a hell of a lot of people like me who do. Must be. <laughs> I'm not alone. None of us are alone. God. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Get on with this. Come on, come on. Yeah, never truly seen the room before. Not probably seen it. Everything was fresh and pristine, as if it had just come into existence. I picked up things, a pencil, an empty bottle, marvelling at the beauty and the liveness of it all. That day I walked around the city in utter amazement at the miracle of life on earth, as if I had just been born into this world. For the next five months I lived in a state of uninterrupted deep peace and bliss. Wow. After that it diminished somewhat in intensity, or perhaps it just seemed to become, oh, seemed to because it became my natural state. I could still function in the world, although I realised that nothing I ever did could possibly add anything to what I already had. Love that. <laughs> I knew, of course, that something profoundly significant had happened to me, but it, I didn't understand it at all. It wasn't until several years later, after I had read spiritual texts and spent time with spiritual teachers, that I realised that what everybody was looking for had already happened to me. Yeah. Everyone's out there searching, searching, aren't they? We all want the answer. We're all searching for more, trying to get it. But it's getting back inside ourselves. It's getting to love, you know. It's loving ourselves. It's getting inside, really, and going from deep within yourself, living life from there, which is love, you know, we're all made up of. And that's, you know, my understanding and my way of describing it at the moment. Uh, but I realise, you know, I've got a hell of a long way to go. Massive, massive amount. Okay. Um, he could still function in the world, but he had what other people were looking for. 
I knew, of course, that something profoundly significant had happened to me, but I didn't know. Oh, I've done that bit already. Right. Yeah, right. It already happened to him. I understood that in the intense pressure of suffering that night must have forced my consciousness to withdraw from its identification with the unhappy and deeply fearful self. Which is ultimately a fiction of the mind. Yeah, notice that. The unhappy and deeply fearful self is a fiction of the mind. Because we're all love and wonderful and stuff in reality. This withdrawal must have been so complete that this false suffering self immediately collapsed. Just as if a plug had been pulled out of an inflatable toy. Yeah, it's in the ego, isn't it? His ego was destroyed that night. I mean, it's just, you know amazing what happened to him obviously it was meant to be i don't think just because he was suffering that it happened to him i think he, he was his own spiritual path you know it was given to him kind of thing so that he could go on to be his teacher you know i don't think other people can have that experience not like in that way they can work towards getting into the bliss state yeah which i've experienced but you know the way it happened to him it was his own special thing I might be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you know better, um, or you know, think better. <laughs> so it was Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. What was left then was my true nature as the ever-present I am, consciousness in its pure state prior to identification with form. Later, I also learned to go into that inner timeless and deathless realm that I had originally perceived as a void and remained fully conscious. I dwelt in states of such indescribable bliss and sacredness that even the original experience I just described pales in comparison. Wow. <laughs> the time came when, after a while, I was left with nothing on the physical plane. I had no relationships. Wow. Fucking hell. Excuse me. No job, no home, no socially defined identity. I spent almost two years sitting on park benches in a state of the most intense joy. <laughs> oh, God, can you imagine? Nope. <laughs> but can't imagine any of us can imagine that. Just sitting on park benches. I mean, it must have been, must have been living in a warm country, mustn't he? Jesus, he's in America somewhere. I mean, God, you just live on park benches, not worry about food and anything, any possessions. And, oh, wow. Anyway, but that is our real state, you know. But anyway, but even the most beautiful experiences come and go. More fundamental, perhaps, than any experience is the undercurrent of peace that has never left me since then. <sighs> Sometimes it is very strong, almost palpable, and others can feel it too. At other times, it is somewhere in the background, like a distant melody. Wow. Later, people occasionally come up to me and say, I want what you have. God, yeah. Making me want to cry. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I'm crazy, you know. The crying of this. Uh, right. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> they would say to him, I want what you have. Can you give it to me? Or show me how to get it. And I would say... <laughs> I'm crying. This is stupid. This is stupid. Ah, uh, don't want to cry on camera. Here we go. Can you give it to me or show me how to get it? And I would say, you have it already. You just... It's because I know this stuff. Talking to me so deeply, do you know what I mean? That's been my whole life till now. It's almost like not confessing, it's like a confession I know this about this stuff. It's like angel stuff or something, it's like higher dimensional stuff I know about it. And I've always had this joy, you know, this pure joy. <laughs> Because of my childhood, I had to keep it under wraps, you know. 
I, I was like a bright spark born into this world and I had to be something completely different. I was ignored, I was pushed down, I was completely and utterly squashed. I had all my rights taken away from me. Every single right you could possibly have was stripped away. I was crushed, you know, completely. And I became this thing that I believed at the time my parents wanted me to be. And this is no shade to my parents. This is absolutely no shade to them. If you knew what they both went through themselves and how they came together and had me, kind of thing, me and my sister, who's older, who suffered far more than I, I have. I'm really lucky. I've got so much to be grateful for. You know, you wouldn't blame them at all if you understood how it works. You know, I understand how it works, how we can uh, be born and why I was born into that. I chose that. That's for me. It's for me to experience this joy because if I didn't have the opposite, I wouldn't experience this joy. Do you get it? We're all born into the opposite of what we are, anyway. What? This, uh, I'll carry on with this. Yeah, I'll talk about that more in another video because I hadn't intended to. I just didn't realise I was going to cry and start <laughs> confess that I know this stuff. And I've never been able to express it, you see. I've never been in the circumstance of being with anyone who is on the same level except my ex-boyfriend, who I spent 25 years living with and he's still in and out of my life now. We had such a strong bond because of this kind of level, but he's on a completely different path to me or different it's like I'm a one life path in numerology he's a nine and we he's an Aquarius in astrology and I'm a Leo they're both exact opposites and so it's so hard for us to kind of anyway <laughs> that whole another video right it's all about opposites and experiencing you have to have like hot to experience cold you can't experience one without the other you know, the duality of this life. <sighs> right, later people come up to me and say, I want what you have. God, I'm so much more relaxed now. I've cried on camera. Thanks F for that. I think I should do that every time I make a video. Suddenly I'm back inside myself. Feelings. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, this, oh making these videos is having such a profound effect on me. Even if I don't bother making a YouTube channel, this has been brilliant. Right. How can you, how can I get it too? You already have it. Oh God, here I go again. You just can't feel it because your mind is making too much noise. You already have it. You all have it. But we can't feel it because our mind, it's our mind going, fear, fear, fear. The answer later grew into the book that you were holding in your hands. Before I knew it, I had an external identity again. I had become a spiritual teacher. Right. The truth that is within you, that's the next part. I think I might make him um, do the next part in a separate video because I've spoken for a long time now. Hard to see how, oh, 18 minutes. God, yeah, nearly 20 minutes. So, yeah, I'll leave the rest of it. So, so, hopefully, you'll be like dying to hear the rest of it, the next part. And, um, uh, no, don't do that, do I? Yeah.